Two tropical cyclones are possible and a third will remain well offshore as the monsoon trough strengthens over northern Australia. Your forecast update for January 12th, things are getting busier and busier across the Australian tropics with two tropical lows spinning themselves up, one in the Gulf of Carpentaria and one in the Bonaparte Gulf and also another one well out to sea around the Cocos Islands. All of them have a shot at becoming tropical cyclones, at least one or two will form out of this, picking up the names of either Kiralee or Lincoln. This is your detailed cyclone update brought to you by Force 13 AU. So stick around for the full 18 minutes because I'll be breaking down these systems in great detail and if you are brand new here please do consider subscribing and leave a like on the video while you're at it but we'll take a look at the national picture first and see what weather is happening around Australia hot conditions in our west but those rain and storms are keeping conditions hot down south um, because in the Northern Territory there is a hell of a lot of rainfall happening up there um, up to 100 millimeters for some locations expected today and that's going to extend into the Cape York Peninsula. Rain and showers across parts of the Queensland coastline and those storms as well will extend down to around Canberra area. They should remain inland though and give Sydney a miss and a couple of showers on the western coast of uh, Tasmania. And also I would like to note New Zealand has had its hottest day of the year yesterday and it's going to be a scorcher there tomorrow with some locations expecting daytime maxima approaching the 35 degree threshold on both the South and the North Island. Now for our cyclone forecast you can see a 30% chance of development in the one in the Bonaparte Gulf offshore from Darwin I've dropped the chances on that one considering the lack of model support now and because of the increasing forecast model support I'm expecting a 50% chance of development for the Gulf of Carpentaria one which could form there and then move into the Coral Sea its future is still relatively uncertain but we'll know a lot more by this weekend so we'll be keeping a very close eye on that that's for sure you bet on this channel so now we're going to take a look at the rainfall forecast nationwide for the next 10 days you can see a lot of rainfall continuing up in our Northern uh, Territory and in the Northern Western Australia area. And also over far North Queensland, a lot of rainfall expected to develop there Saturday and into Sunday as these tropical lows form. Now it takes it till about Monday for this rainfall to start to ease off a little bit for the Northern Territory, but it's still really intense on the Western Northern Territory coastline. And as this tropical low spins up by mid to late next week, you can also see it's driving thunderstorm activity across the nation South. We're gonna be in for another round of severe thunderstorms next Thursday and Friday down south as well before this cyclone moves into the Queensland coastline it very much uh, parallels the Gulf of Carpentaria coastline before moving well inland and drenching central Queensland this is a very interesting forecast and certainly something plausible that's for sure now we're taking a look at temperature here to get an idea of what maximas are expected over the next 10 days nationwide you can see very hot conditions across the nation's west with daytime maxima up to 43 degrees Celsius as far south as Gingin and Perth and we're also expecting hot conditions across the nation's red centre. It's a typical summer pattern but it's still quite warm so if you do live in areas that are frequently seeing those pinks and uh, even intense reds you could be seeing very hot temperatures so make sure you're staying cool, you're drinking plenty of water and staying safe and not doing anything stupid in this heat because it is going to be hot and long-term exposure to hot conditions can have a toll on your body that's for sure. So now we're going to take a look at the wind for the tropics and see where these cyclones are expected to be. I've zoomed right out and I'm looking at the system over on the Cocos Keeling Islands as well. You can see that spins itself up uh, by around uh, maybe uh, Saturday or into Sunday as well. That will probably be the first system to get named. So we're now expecting that one to pick up the name of Kiralee and then the name after that will be Lincoln and that sort of happens maybe mid next week as the other uh, tropical low 03U moves into the Gulf of Carpentaria but by then the one in the Southwest Indian Ocean is well and truly named as it starts to intensify and then it tracks towards uh, sort of the Madagascar area but it really is quite a slow moving system and about Thursday is when we see the system in the Gulf of Carpentaria become a fully fledged tropical cyclone and a strong one at that. We're looking at a category three severe tropical cyclone that's hugging the coastline, dumping incredible amounts of rainfall on the Cape York Peninsula before moving inland and drenching central Queensland. That's a very broad system as well. I would like to make note of that. And you can also see a third spin up in the Coral Sea as well. That's also a plausible scenario for this time of the year. And we'll be watching that very closely as well. So now we're taking a look at the satellite imagery on the north of the state, a lot of thunderstorm activity activity, a lot of lightning activity. You can see that these thunderstorms associated with this monsoon trough are really starting to get themselves spun up. There's a defined low pressure system in the mid-levels, albeit a very broad system. Um, and yeah, it'll take it at least another couple of days for it to wrap itself up into a tropical low or a cyclone. But we will be watching that, those clouds very closely because they tell us a great deal of what is happening. 
So before I go into the detailed tropical cyclone forecast, we'll just take a look very briefly at what's happening right now. If you're in Darwin or on the Cape York Peninsula, there are some very strong thunderstorms lingering, uh, dumping a lot of rainfall and bringing uh, locally da uh, damaging winds for some locations, especially around Weeper. There's a lot of thunderstorm activity up there. So make sure you are staying safe and staying indoors from these thunderstorms because the amount of rainfall that they are delivering could cause some substantial flash flooding, that's for sure. But apart from that, nationwide, it's looking fairly clear apart from one or two storms in Western Australia and also one or two storms starting to fire in New South Wales and also a bit of rainfall now blowing ashore for Cairns associated with this monsoonal pattern. Thankfully though, it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing a catastrophic flooding situation unfold, but it will likely hamper the recovery efforts from Cyclone Jasper. But we will now start to take a look at the long-term forecast for these systems. I'm going to start off with 03U before I take a look at 04U over here on the Cocos Islands and then I'm going to jump in and take a look at rainfall nationwide and also the severe weather situation that we're going to see over in New South Wales towards the end of the video. So you can skip around and see what suits you for your forecast. But we will start it off here with 03U. It's located, or at least it's what it's going to become, is located basically over the central Northern Territory top end, um, around Catherine sort of area. And it's a really broad mid-level low pressure system at this time. And it takes it until about Saturday or into Sunday to wrap up a defined low pressure system as it heads offshore around Darwin area before once again it moves onshore and it blows in. And yeah, it does deepen a little bit, but again, it's not a cyclone at this point. It's got some nice winds up towards the north, up to 30 knots from the west with stronger gusts probably approaching that 40 knot threshold. So it's going to be a very rough period for the Timor Sea, that's for sure, or the Arufa Sea as this cyclone starts to develop. However, the main threat, of course, for at least land areas will be rainfall considering winds aren't going to be too strong. But especially into Sunday and Monday, we're seeing these gale force winds starting to blow ashore around the Darwin area. So gale force winds could include those damaging wind gusts that we see with forming tropical cyclones where we might be seeing one or two wind gusts in excess of 50 knots as this cyclone starts to develop, which could uh, rip down trees and power lines and so forth in the Darwin area. But the main threat still is going to remain the rainfall. And as this cyclone moves ashore into Monday and Tuesday and starts to pull out of Darwin, this is when we're going to see the thunderstorms on the back end of this cyclone really start to dump incredible amounts of rainfall. We're talking maybe three or four days straight where some locations pick up in excess of 250 millimetres. So there will be rainfall accumulations from this period that amount to over a metre of rainfall. And under the right river catchment, that's going to cause some pretty devastating flash flooding. Now, because of the brown ocean effect, which I have explained in previous videos, we see this cyclone intensify over landfall and it gets deeper in terms of pressure over land and it's a fully fledged cyclone likely by around Wednesday or Thursday, believe it or not, over land, which is ridiculous it is. It's not often that you see an intensifying system form over land as it moves around um, uh, the Gulf of Carpentaria coastline towards the Queensland and uh, um, Northern Territory border. Um, and yeah, and by Thursday and into Friday, it's still that fully fledged tropical cyclone with peak winds approaching 60 knots. We're looking at maybe a category two strength system here from this cyclone, a very strong system, that's for sure, for one to be located over land. Now, what has me very concerned is if this storm gets itself over the Gulf of Carpentaria, like fully over the Gulf of Carpentaria, we're going to see some very dramatic intensification from this system, very, very rapid and especially if this storm can keep itself rather compact and rather small, then there is going to be a lot of strengthening as it approaches its final landfall site around Mornington Island or on the Queensland border. It very briefly gets itself over water around Burketown and Corumba, that sort of area, and it will affect these indigenous communities extending between Burketown up towards Weeper and inland to Georgetown quite dramatically in terms of significant rainfall amounts that we're expecting. But a strong cyclone could is definitely possible in the Gulf of Carpentaria. If this wobbles and gets itself over the the Gulf of Carpentaria, then we could be looking at a rapidly intensifying tropical cyclone right up towards landfall because if this thing can intensify over land, then think of the damage that it could do if it intensifies over water, which is concerning. However, it doesn't look like it get, that scenario really does play out and it moves inland into central Queensland past Mount Isa down towards Hu Huandon and then down towards Longreach and so forth. In fact, it sort of um, bullseyes itself for Birdsville and by next Sunday, it's basically just a remnant low. It's just a bunch of clouds as it moves over central Queensland, but still dropping a substantial amount of rainfall, um, really bringing in a lot of moisture from the Queensland co uh, from the uh, Gulf of Carpentaria and the Coral Sea over the Queensland coastline. It looks like Queensland is in for a very wet period once again on the run up to Australia Day. So we'll be watching out for that very closely because that could be bringing further flash flooding uh, misery towards the Cape York Peninsula, and that's not what 
or what we want to see at all leading up to our uh, famous national holiday. But a lot of rainfall is expected from this system, which I will get to in a minute or so. We're going to take a look very briefly at this tropical cyclone over here in the Indian Ocean. Now, it is expected to get up towards Category 2 status, maybe. It's likely to pick up the name of Kiralee, considering it's expected to develop maybe on Monday or into Tuesday as it just passes through West Island, which is a couple of days before the one in the Gulf of Carpentaria will likely develop. Um, now, this will likely not impact the Cocos Islands too much. However, it will definitely lead to an increase in rainfall and showery conditions, so expect more puddles on those islands. But I'm not expecting a catastrophic storm surge emergency or a massive wind emergency, that's for sure, which is good news indeed. And then it will go off next into next weekend and as we head up towards Australia Day and just die off and peter off in the middle of the Indian Ocean. And it will probably um, be blasted apart by the cyclones that are expected to move through Mauritius and that sort of area. And you can keep track of that on the main channel at Force 13, but we won't be providing coverage on that on this channel. But uh, we will now take a look at rainfall accumulation over our tropical north. And you can see a lot of rainfall expected from, these, uh, cyclone, from this cyclone as it passes through. Now, if we zoom right in here, you can see Darwin still expects beyond 800 millimetres of rain, in fact, up to 900 millimetres over the CBT. Now, that's down 100 millimetres from yesterday, so that tells me that there's very good model certainty in terms of how much rainfall is actually expected. And considering it's an onshore flow and it's going to happen over a couple of days, then we're just looking out for ridiculous rainfall totals. And I believe on Monday is when it really does start to peak as this cyclone makes passage and like moves through. We're looking out for totals approaching that sort of 30 to 40 millimetres an hour, and this will just persist for days on end. So it's not unprecedented for Darwin, considering it is typically a very wet city in the monsoon season, but it's definitely a lot of rainfall, and it will cause flooding in the river catchments through the um, Adelaide River and the Daly River up here, um, and all the rivers through Kakadu as well. They could receive some significant flooding from this system, because a lot of rainfall is expected at, with the passage of this tropical low or tropical cyclone, depending on how strong it gets. And there will be places that pick up over a thousand millimetres of rain over the next 10 days from this storm. Now, considering the cyclone's slow moving uh, motion and the um, how close it will be to the coast, there's going to be places, especially around the Queensland Northern Territory border, that only receive, say, 400 or 500 mm millimetres in a calendar year that pick up up to three, maybe even four years worth of rainfall in spots, up to 1,500, 1,600 millimetres of rainfall from this event uh, that's on the forecast. That's certainly a plausible scenario. Mornington Island itself expecting a rather uncertain, maybe three to 400 millimetres of rainfall. And then there's towns in Norman, Normantown, Corumba, Burketown that are on the Queensland coastline uh, that are river towns, mind you, that pick up a tremendous amount of rainfall. And considering that these are river towns, then we're likely going to be seeing these riverine flash flooding situations or sustained river flooding over the next two weeks after this cyclone makes its passage through just because of the sheer volume of water that it dumps. Now also as this cyclone moves through uh, central Queensland, considering that there's a lot of rivers here that flow into these big lakes in central um, South Australia and just around and up towards the uh, Gulf of Carpentaria, that when this cyclone makes passage through, not only are dams going to fill, but these rivers are going to fill and they will flow for months. So there could be a flooding situation down towards Lake Eyre that happens two weeks after this cyclone makes passage. So this is really something that we need to uh, watch out for quite closely, especially across central Queensland, that's for sure. But yeah, so a lot of rainfall expected from these systems as they make passage through. And I believe now is a good time to talk about the developing severe weather situation or the severe thunderstorm situation that we're going to be looking out for across New South Wales and Queensland. Because next week, it's going to be quite stormy indeed with the passage of these tropical cyclones, evening thunderstorms and these strong thunderstorms will uh, start to increase because of the trough that's going to extend down the coast and the increased moisture flow in from the uh, Tasman Sea and the Coral Sea. And these are going to dry some pretty strong thunderstorms Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and into Thursday night as well. I believe Thursday night is our peak, especially with the passage of this cold front. We're going to be seeing some very strong thunderstorms across Victoria, Tasmania, and also into New South Wales if this forecast is to materialise. Now, it's still a long way out, still about a week away, so we'll need to be watching this forecast closely considering... Um, that there's a lot of variables in uh, forecasting thunderstorms and a lot can change, of course, as we, as we all know with thunderstorms. But yeah, there's definitely going to be some significant thunderstorm action. Uh, it's just going to come down to whereabouts this thunderstorm action will be. But yeah, it looks like Thursday night they start to ease off, but they blow through northern New South Wales at this point. And yeah, it looks like then it's uh, southern Queensland's turn on Friday night when we just see this big line of thunderstorms move through as this cyclone, which will probably be tropical cyclone Lincoln at this point, makes its 
next passage down. Now, I'm also seeing a tropical low up here in the Coral Sea. Now, if this is to form, that is a little bit of a concern considering it's going to be driving from its outflow or from its inflow, I guess, a lot of moisture in from the Coral Sea. And that's going to extend right down the Queensland coastline. And as I said a little bit earlier on, Queensland will head into a very, very, very wet period because of it into Sunday and into Monday um, in about two weeks time. Yeah, the 20th, 21st and the 22nd of January, then we're looking out for a lot of rainfall down here where we could be seeing totals approach that 100 millimeters per day for a couple of days straight. And again, you know, with these heavy showers, there could be one or two spots that pick up over 150 or 200 millimeters in one day. And in six, hourly, six hourly totals rather could approach that sort of 100 millimeter threshold. So another rain event for Southeast Queensland, a thunderstorm event for New South Wales, significant thunderstorms for Victoria and Tasmania. In fact, a boatload of rainfall down in Southern Tasmania. I'll take a look at that really briefly because it looks like they could be in for an absolute drenching winds. That looks like about Wednesday and into Thursday. That is a ridiculous amount of rainfall. That's not something that you see every single year. But yeah, it, it's certainly in the realm of possibility. Sometimes when a low pressure system sets itself up in the Tasman Sea, it just dumps rainfall on Tasmania. And we see these totals approach 200, 250. In fact, around Swansea, up to 500 millimeters could be expected from this low pressure system. However, that's not forecast across all the models. The other forecast models suggesting, yeah, quite a bit of rainfall, but not anywhere near as much as the Access G3 model was suggesting at that time, which is good news because we don't want too much model certainty around an event like that because that means that it's all but guaranteed. Um, and just briefly, I would also like to talk about how much rainfall is possible around the Cairns area in regards to the uh, flooding situation from Cyclone Jasper. You can see as this cyclone makes passage Tuesday and into Wednesday, we're going to see this increase in moisture around the Cairns area. And that will extend anywhere north of Townsville and up towards Cooktown. So if you are a Cairns viewer, make sure you're watching out because there's storms and there will be rainfall next Wednesday, Thursday and into Friday associated with this cyclone Lincoln's passage. And then next weekend as well could be quite wet indeed as I play this run through. Uh, fully so quite a lot of rainfall is possible and there will be places that pick up up to 200, 300 millimetres of rain. Nothing compared to what Cyclone Jasper dumped. However, it will definitely be hampering those um, recovery efforts and in already saturated catchments where moisture levels are at about 100%, we'll likely be seeing a little bit more flooding or even flash flooding, which is a concerning sign indeed. And it's a really sorry sight to see considering the damage that they've already endured. However, it is the Australian tropics and it's just stuff that we have to do with, frankly. Um, it's very wet one year, very dry another year and I know that we've been talking about this El Nino that's uh, that was meant to be happening but it's really fizzled out it has and we're looking at seeing a La Nina later next year um, more than uh, possible in that situation um, which will drive more moisture and more water it's good news in the sense that the south is spared from a bushfire emergency but it's really a double-edged sword in the sense that northern Australia cops it in terms of cyclones and intense rainfall and I can tell you right now there's no end in sight in terms of rainfall it's going to be wetter than average until maybe March or April at the very least and we could be seeing rainfall up in the top end until about May or June so there's still that risk of flooding until about early May when the wet season really does start to peter off so we'll be watching this very closely across the Force 13 AU channel but I believe this video has gone for long enough so if you have enjoyed it please do consider leaving a like um, let's see if we can get 500 likes on this video because we've been seeing some amazing totals lately and I'm loving the support that we're seeing here leave us a uh, weather report or feedback in the comments section down below I love reading them and also subscribe as well because we've just hit 10,000 and there's no end in sight for these forecasts. So if you want the latest every single day, make sure you are subscribed because we'll be bringing you the latest you bet. Anyways, that's all for me and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye. Thank you for watching our content this update. If you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe to get more updates covering all things weather and geophysics impacting Australia and the Oceania region. Subscribe to our other channels for more content from across the network and be sure to check out our website where you can find free access to floater and radar imagery and articles on everything weather and much more. If you wish to support us directly, you can purchase some of our merchandise. We have a wide variety of clothing and homeware. Or you could become an ultimate fan, which is the best way to directly support us, granting you some sweet perks and offers, including features in our custom storm animations, live streams, and much more. <laughs>